Okay, welcome to today's live stream. We're getting started just a few minutes late. If you've ever had one of those days when uh, things just don't want to work right, well, that would be today. So we'll see how this stream goes. And i um, not going to pretend like uh, everything's just working perfectly. So, you know, we'll do, uh, we'll just go with it. And uh, we'll see if we can't make it work as we go. So specifically, um, I'm trying something new with the way that I do some of these live streams. And it turns out that um, it's actually really tricky to get the lighting right when you're doing green screen type work. And um, we're going to see if we can't um, get that to dial in a little bit here. So we don't just have like green screen bleed all over the video, which um, I have right now a little bit. So um, we'll just we'll just go with it a little bit. Okay, let's see if I make one little adjustment here. Ooh, and then there's always like this awkward delay. Okay, cool. We're gonna go with it. So today we're talking about modulation inside Alchemy. Uh, this is an amazing tool inside Logic, and uh, the modulation part of it is one of the more important ones to actually master. Uh, and yet, this seems to be one of the areas that is the weakest in terms of how uh, this works. And so, uh, that being said, it is possible to really get a grip on how modulation works inside this piece of software. You just have to be really diligent and, and understand uh, some of the ways in which it works. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. And we'll be hopefully also getting to some of your questions if you have any and exploring some of the topics further that you might want to see. So keep that going in the chat if you have anything that uh, you're looking forward specifically, uh, then, then let me know. Okay, so modulation. What this is, and if you're brand new to modulation, then let's just start with maybe like a basic understanding of what this feature is inside Alchemy. And in fact, this is a feature inside more than just Alchemy and Logic. It's all over the place. Uh, it's all over Logic in, in different places. But modulation refers to controlling one parameter with a separate tool or parameter. Meaning, if I have the volume of Alchemy, I can control the volume automatically using a different part of Alchemy. It could be an LFO, which means it would sweep up and down. It could be an envelope, which means it would go up, down a little bit for initial decay, sustain, release, and even more complex with some of these in here. Um, we could use a sequencer. Uh, we could use a modulation map. There's a lot of different options for this. And so we get to really decide how that works. Now, you've undoubtedly seen modulation in action if you've used Alchemy whatsoever. In fact, most of the patches have uh, modulation built onto it. Uh, and we're going to be looking at specifically things in this case. And this, this is just a default patch. Um, where there's the orange line around things and a blue line. So anytime you see an orange line around something, you'll know automatically that it has some sort of control happening with that. So it's being controlled by some other parameter. And one of the quickest ways to see what is just to click on that. And then down below inside of our modulation area, you're going to see what. What is actually controlling it. Um, and by how much. So we can say that the, the target has an on button, means we can turn it off, and you'll see the orange line up, up above going away. Um, control 4 down here uh, is part of the performance area. And so what we have with control 4, that's a, a topic that we weren't necessarily going to get into as much today, but it looks like we have to just for a second. Um, we have a bunch of different controls as part of our performance pad. And so that's where that's going. So the performance pads are controlling the position parameter 
of this particular item. Uh, and so that's where it starts to get complicated, right? You have to understand all of those individual pieces to make this work. But we can do that for sure. Let's look at our panning here. I'm going to click on that. You'll see it's on the LFO number two. And you'll see that we switched over to that uh, in this section is, um, is controlling the panning. But right now, okay, so this is the rabbit hole, right? So I clicked on panning. It showed up that LFO two is controlling that, which means it would be panning back and forth at a rate of a quarter note. That's what this uh, right over here says. It says it's, it's the shape of a sine wave. The rate is one fourth or a quarter note. So it's sunk to the tempo of your project. The problem is right now the depth is at 0%, which means it's not doing anything. Um, and that's okay because on the depth knob, we have another orange line going around that knob. And with that orange line, we know that there's another layer of modulation happening. So I'm going to click on this one. Actually, I'm not going to be able to click on that one. Um, we're going to right click and say show modulation because when you're in the modulation area you can't click to have it automatically switch the modulation so i right clicked on it let's go back and do that one more time click on pan you'll see the depth i'm going to say show modulation it pops up here and now it's control two from the performance right there and i don't know if i just overwrit something let's undo okay yeah cool um and so this right here, this knob, performance two knob, um, is controlling how much of the LFO is controlling how much of the pan. If your head's not exploding, I mean, this is, uh, we were having an interesting conversation in the last Alchemy live stream, and it was about having some sort of overview or matrix where you could see all of this at once. This is the exact reason why that would make sense. Just to have another button someplace that says, show me all my modulation and have it all fly up on the screen. So we have that depth right there. Uh, and I'm assuming if I move this some point in here, it doesn't move up there, but um, anytime we have the second performance thing move up, Oh, actually right here, it's right there. Control two. Ooh, this is going to be interesting. So I'm looking at this patch, for instance, for the very first moment. Control two, and then mod wheel is control two. So it looks like the mod wheel has a play in this as well. Okay, let's start from the very beginning. We're going to initialize the preset. And again, that's by clicking on file, initialize preset and it takes us back to the, a blank slate. Let's start by creating a few really simple modulation things, right? That's what we want to do is just do something really simple so you can see how to build something from scratch. Um, we'll start with our volume knob in uh, our first of our four different slots here because sometimes we want to have that one separately modulated than like say the global volume which would be over here we're going to come back to this one you'll see i can click back and forth by choosing just clicking on the button it goes blue the overall button goes blue that's fine um, at this point i could come down here because it says volume a in our modulation section so i could do it directly here or i can click on this and add modulation uh, so in this case, let's just, again, keep it super simple. We're going to do a sine wave, and you'll see the orange line shows up, which shows us the range of modulation. Um, and then down here, again, if I have gone someplace else, I need to click back on the volume knob, which I hadn't, but then I need to come through and say, what exactly do we want to do with this? Make sure it's on. It should be on the minute you create it by default. But then... The depth is how much that's going to work. And I'm going to just 
use my typing keyboard for a second. And I don't hear anything, but maybe, let me see if you're hearing it. Oh, this is part of the fun of live streams. Let me just check my audio settings real quick, make sure I didn't lose anything. And then go back. I'm going to just check this out for a second because, gosh, that would be so much. This would be perfect timing for my day. We may be doing this a little bit without sound. This is like a perfect day. Um, I can't stop, I can't restart my streaming software because then we'd all be gone. So we're gonna do it, I guess, without sound for a moment. Um, oh, you can all hear it. I'm just the one who can't. Give me one second. I'm going to fix that just so I can hear it. I love live streams. I found a problem. Okay. Ah, okay. So we can all hear it now. I can hear it and you can hear it. I love it. Hey, GigaDeath. Thanks for joining the stream. And thanks for that. You're awesome, obviously. Um... So, we've got sound. This is just, we're going to power through this and make it work. I love having to figure stuff out on the fly, but, you know. Oh, yeah. I can see the signal. We're good. So, we've got this going. And um, we get to change some of those parameters if we want to. So, let's click back on the volume. And uh, if I want to do this faster, I can change the LFO setting. Almost, we can essentially do frequency modulation type synthesis with that. And there's all these other wave shapes that we have for our LFOs. We're not really talking about LFOs as much right this moment, but um, we do have some cool things we can do with some of these. Some really cool things. So let's go back to the basic for a moment. Uh, and then we can say how much we want this to affect it by the depth. Do we want it to be more of like a little vibrato? Or fully all the way, right? We can also change the range of how much is happening over here by changing the destination parameter. That sets kind of the overall range for the whole thing. So that's important to set as well. Now we come through here and you'll notice we have 100%. We also have a minus 100%. So that doesn't change exactly on this specific parameter, but it's like going just in the opposite direction. There's sometimes where we want it uh, to go to move in an opposite in the opposite way. Okay, and then we also have this middle section, which we're not going to talk about quite yet. Um, but this is, uh, it's kind of like if you ever use some of the older effects in Logic. In fact, in fact we have some of these on not just the older ones, but um, let me pull open one of these real quick. Let's do the ES2. This section right in the middle here, uh, the router section. It's like we have the target, the source, and then the via. And that's kind of similar to what we're going to do here with this middle section here. Um, 
with the, with the mod map. And so we're not going to get into that right off the bat. We'll see what we do today um, with that at all. But it's, I mean, it, it just adds additional power to everything. Um, okay, so let's now look at this. Say that we only want that volume changing. Let's see where... Oh yeah, let's go back to LFO. We might have to clear that for a second because we've messed it up a little bit. Add modulation LFO. Turn up the... Hmm, so... I think when we did the mod map in the middle, we blew that for a minute, but let's just reload it. Oh, I didn't, actually, that was totally, that was my bad. I, I see exactly what I did. We'll just start back at scratch. And just make sure we're on the right instrument. <laughs> Love live streams, they're the best. Okay, so we're gonna do the same thing, add modulation. Keep it simple, back to where we were. So now we can right click on the depth knob and do a number of things. You can see LFO, envelope, the MSEG, sequencer, envelope follower, note property, MIDI, and perform. So we have all these different choices. Let's keep it simple for a second. And we're just gonna do a new LFO, LFO number two. And this rate is gonna be much, let's do like eight bars. And in this case, all the way up. You can hear how it's changing very slowly, and that's because this modulator is going quite a bit slower than the other one, and it's telling the first one how much to work, so how far to go down. Um, we can also, again, change the destination so that it's doing more. So I'm looking at this and saying, you know what, that's like right in the middle there. Cool. So we get additional layers of motion all happening simultaneously. Super cool. Let's reset this again. Initialize preset. Um, I want to see. So we have some basic stuff already going. Let's look at how this ties in to the performance a little bit. Um, because I do think it's important to understand this. Um, this is essentially eight different settings uh, of various things. We don't, so for instance, on the Sculpture uh, plugin, the Sculpture instrument, we have the Morph Pad. It has five different points. Uh, there's like two, there's one in each corner and then one in the center. And each of those, you like click on it and you make changes to the instrument. Right, you actually make changes up on the parameters, and as you move then around, it uh, morphs between all of those parameters. Well, we don't do that here in Sculpture or in Alchemy the same way as we do in Sculpture. Um, we have to set the things we want to change to these knobs right here. Um, and so, if we you know want to make a change with something, then we can do that. We also have a, also have an X Y, or yeah, well an X Y two X Y pads 
that we can assign things to. And then we have some other things down here uh, where we can uh, set things using like the mod wheel. So if we're on one of these, um, let's do this. Let's right click, add modulation, performance, um, control number one. And you're gonna see it pops up right there. And so I say we want 100% volume for number one. And then for this one, I just want, uh, and we can actually, I believe, man, that is not cool. Doesn't look like we can um, type it in that I know of. No, we can type in the name. Double click on that just takes us back to zero. I feel like if anyone's watching knows if there's a way to actually do that, that would be information that I don't have. So I click on number one, takes me to 100. Click on number two, takes me to 50. Right, you can see that moving. Now you didn't hear any volume change. And that's because even setting this to this knob, which goes 50 to 100, isn't going to make a change without setting the depth in the modulation area to 100%. And then all the rest are at zero. So that's where, again, another layer of having to always pay attention. The depth knob becomes one of the most important ones in all of alchemy, because if you don't remember to do that, you're not going to have anything that happens with it. Okay, so let's do the panning. And there's a few different ways to do this, um, but I, this is more of just like learning about these tools. Let's add modulation, and for this one, let's do new sequencer. This is different than the sequencer that's in the arpeggiator, just FYI. They look the same, but they're different. And so you have to know which one you're on. Um, in this case, let's set the depth all the way up. So we have pan going. Let's just play a note. Um, maybe someone who's watching can let me know if you're hearing this in stereo. And let's do this all the way. Okay, cool. Thanks, Cider. So I have to move my destination. If I leave it here, it's just going to go center to right. But if I pull this all the way to the left, then it will go between left and right. Cool. So we can do a little bit less of the depth if we want. So we're getting a back and forth motion. Um, let's clear that because we don't necessarily, you know, that's just showing you another option with all of this. Um, okay, any, any questions so far? I know there's a few of you watching. Um, what is, what uh, things are you still curious about in terms of the overall modulation uh, system? We do have a, so we have one for the mod remaps or the mod maps. Uh, and we will, let's, we'll get there in just a second for sure. Um, and I'd want to point out, I just want to remind everybody too, because it's going to take you some time um, to fully get these. Don't forget if you're like on one of these parameters, you can command slash 
and um, it'll pull open the help menu or you could use the quick help um, which is actually super nice as well so if you're here you're like ooh mod map I just want to see you know what that is then you can pull that up it's not uh, not that big of a deal now gigadeth what do you mean by how to control it from the track Um, so let me explain a little bit about the mod map for a second. Um, the mod map, just like I was saying a few minutes ago about the ES2 or even some of the other ones where we had the modulation section where it had the source and the destination and then the via, it's kind of like the via in many ways. The mod map itself is not a modulation. Uh, it just changes the output of a modulation on the way someplace. So for instance, let's go back to our original one here with our volume. Let's get our panning in the middle. Let's turn up this. Turn it on. Oof. What? Oh, I see. We didn't assign anything. So let's do that. Oh, we're in the wrong place. Give me back. LFO. There we go. That's what I wanted. And then we do a new mod map. Let's see, do we have any presets? I don't think so. So. The straight line is linear. And if we move this, which we can do more than just move it, but if we move it, it's almost like adding a swing. So we do a swing thing there. We just swing the opposite direction. Now, of course, you can add in additional steps. You could do a full step. Cool. So you get to create really custom ways that that uh, that the original shape is implemented, giving precedence to the timing or the parts in the middle of the modulation or at the extremes of it. This is how that sounds when you have a repetitive LFO in play. But I mean, this works with other ones that are not just LFOs. And so you can uh, step sequence through things. You just double click to add things. Um, I think, oop, that was not the right thing to do. No, no, no. Let's go back to the mod map here. Number two, there we go. Um, and then you can double click on them again to remove them. Don't hit the delete key. That doesn't work. Um, we can also, with all of these, snap to various functions, so um, keep that in mind as well. Let me see some of the chat. Um, Gigadest is saying, programming a value change into a part of my sequence. Ooh, okay. And then the remaps in Vital are really nice to quantize and create switches. Can we have a grid on the mod map, for example, 12 by 16? Um, I haven't done that too much. Um, I don't know if we have a traditional. So, yes. Uh, 
there's 12 steps uh, on the x-axis and then 16 on the y-axis and then you can re uh, change the, you can actually invert them just by changing the snap quantity on either one. So the answer to that question is yes. I can honestly say I've never used the snap feature, um, but that's super cool. Uh, it's very, it makes it way more useful in my opinion. Um, so moving those around, so you can split them up. So you can see we have um, off or key, which I have used before. So this gives you a different parameter per, per the key, um, and then the other way is, you know, how much snap we have on or off, all the way up to, um, looks like 196. So on a per key basis, that is super useful. Let me go to 196 to 196. Oof. And then you can select groups. Oh. Some of that's going to make way more sense when it's not an LFO as our uh, modulation source. Um, let's go to a, a fresh start here. Number, well, new mod map. So on to a new one. And these are all reusable, meaning you can make new ones um, and then attach those to multiple places, all kinds of things. It's actually super useful. I wish there was more presets um, involved with this too. I wish they had a bunch that we could just pull from. I don't think, oh, they do have some. I forgot about that. Inside the file menu, presets. So you can do things like concave, four-way switch, eight-way switches. Again, that's not going to mean much in this particular instance. Um, but we do have quantization ones, major one octave, But um, I think these are more use, even more useful in some ways when we're doing like filter modulations and, and other things with that. So again, this is changing how LFO1 is heading out to the volume parameter because that's my source and destination. And then the mod map is just a, an interlude in the middle. Okay, so Gigadeth, let's talk about what you're, uh, what you were asking for a moment here, um, because I do think that that's super, like an interesting question. You're talking about programming a value change into a part of your sequence. Um, so, I mean, I can think of a few different ways of doing this. Um, it depends on which parameter, because I don't believe all of them in Alchemy are automatable, for instance. Um, but we have some options here. And let's start with just looking at what we do have. Um, ugh, redo, redo. Turn off that, go into here. And so we go to volume, we look at alchemy, and you'll see all of the different parameters which are automatable in, on your track. And if it's automatable, it means a few different things. Um, one of the things it means is that um, we can program it onto a keyboard or something. But you can see, like, you know, all of these different things are available with all the different types of synthesis and filters um, for each of the sources, the morphs, the, the two main filters, the master, the LFOs, the, uh, all of the attack, the K all the envelopes, um, the sequencer, let's see, we have 
some of those parameters, the arpeggiator. So any of these things can be set up that way. And if they can be set up as automation, it also means we can use some smart controls for this, um, which are kind of nice. Let's go to the actual controls and we'll go to here. So we have this like default thing that's set up, um, which ooh, is nice, but I don't think, so this allows us to do all the eight pads all simultaneously. Let's like click on one of these things. Um, so you could, Let's see, automatic smart controls. Let's just get, I wonder, vintage synth 10. Yeah, let's pull this one. Instead of using the default alchemy skin, um, I'm just pulling this because I wanna switch it. So we're gonna switch this to any of these parameters. Source A, basic, volume A, right? Dun -dun -dun. Um, and then we can learn an external assignment. So say you have a keyboard with knobs, you can attach that. So you can go directly from a MIDI controller into any of those automatable parameters of alchemy and then have those as control. Uh, you could just use the performance settings here. And so we move these or we assign those to whatever you want. And then that becomes automatable using like um well like your ipad or whatever you could use the the touch interface or the smart controls with that um, you could if you want uh, come in with midi effects and uh, let's do the modulator and open up alchemy for a second and um, I, you know this one is maybe more you can do almost everything inside alchemy itself but if you want to use some of the external MIDI effects, you could, um, because they attach into all of those same things too. So we have that option. Um, so between the smart control mapping, which allows us to do external or just buttons internally to the parameters, the automation pane itself, uh, or the performance pad, I think that what else would you want to do? Um, I guess that's my question then. So I've gone through all of those. Which, what is it that is missing that you can't, um, that isn't part of that? And I'll give you a second. I'm looking something else up about this too. While, if you're still here and actually typing something, um, why don't I show real quick one of the other things about this? So I think LFO seems like a pretty straightforward mod. Um, repeating waveform, some of them very complex, right? Uh, the envelope seems pretty straightforward, um, although we could go over it if we need to. The sequencer... A repeating pattern. Um, some of these I do think are kind of interesting. Um, we haven't gone through all of the, the, the values and things that we can do, but it's a sequencer. The envelope follow, follower is one of my favorites um, because this is where we can turn uh, alchemy into a type of vocoder, a type, not exactly, but it's, it works similarly because we can do uh, a sidechain input into Alchemy and have that be um, a modulator of various things. So um, say that our sidechain is like a drum kit. Every time the drum hits, it's going to tr trigger the modulation to happen in this other place. Um, we could look at that in a little bit or maybe save that for another more advanced day. Um, and of course, any of those same ones. The mod map we've looked at. It isn't a modulator itself. It just controls. That leaves the multi-segment um, envelope generator. 
And um, this one is one that I don't use a ton, but it's super cool. So um, we can actually come through here. Let's see. Doo -doo 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 -doo. So let's go back to our volume for a second. And instead of LFO, let's do the multi-segment number one. The depth is turned all the way up. Let's get my keyboard. Uh, and so we can control that that same way. Um, and this becomes another way to do like interesting shapes of things as we're going. So uh, long, smooth. Doesn't sound all that smooth, but let's turn off that. Well, MSEG. It was the um, the mod map that was making it sound weird. So you can draw in all kinds of shapes. Um, yeah, so let's actually, I did a video about this a long time ago now. Um, let's do envelope follower, a new one. And for this, I'll show you this real quick, side chain. And of course the side chain we set up here. So let's do a new, like a drummer track, right? And on this drummer track, um, I'm going to mute, I think. Um, let's set the output. Well, we'll just do it out bus two here. And with this, we'll do it pre-fader. All right, so theoretically, that's working. Who knows if it actually is? We'll, have to, we'll double check that in a second. Instrument three. No, I did that wrong. So we're doing the bus. So let's um, let's cancel all of the plugins for a second. Bus two. I, this is, I hate the way that they route things in Logic with that stuff. I don't like it. So now we have the drum volume modulating the volume of this, this instrument. But we don't have to do that. It doesn't have to be volume to volume. It's going to be volume on the input no matter what. But the volume then can control a filter sweep or it could control panning or tuning. I mean, it could control a lot of things. So, um, I mean, let, you could just do two of these to the same thing. Envelope follower number two for both of them.
I mean, I agree with Cider. I mean, this is like, we, we're not even into this instrument. We're still looking at the, moduli the modulation stuff. The stuff in the instrument that comes next, all of the different synthesis types, the granular, uh, the additive, the, the spectral, all of that stuff. Once you combine that part of the engine with what you can do with the modulation, it's mind blowing. The problem with the modulation, as I've said in this video a few times, is that it's dang hard sometimes to keep this organized. I mean, sure, we have a show targets, right? Imagine if I had an instrument that was using all eight performance pads, all four of these things, and the morph engine. I mean, we're looking at all of this. We're gonna have a list that's like a hundred down in here. And so it becomes very complicated. Um, but it's manageable if you understand the principles of it. Is it manageable if you can just figure out some of the basics of this? I'm just reading comments for a second. Um, and then Bitterman says, tweaking the sound with some reverb alone could be giant when making insane EDM. I agree. Not only that, but we don't take for granted that um, the overall effects, we do have one, a really nice convolution reverb where you can load your impulse from wherever. Um, and I do a lot of impulse stuff. Uh, as some of you who watch my channel know, I do a lot of uh, creation of impulses and cathedrals and churches and places. So the fact that I can load it right into this instrument itself and have some of the, the setups, uh, the settings that come with it, um, I think are very, very useful. Um, and so I think that that's nice. Plus it has its own preset manager. I mean, this thing was designed, uh, because it was designed pre-logic, before it was incorporated logic. It had to have all of these things and they've left them in. I, do we need a preset for the reverb inside this? No, but there are times it's useful um, to be able to do that, to save all these settings so that you can more easily pull them into other alchemy patches you're working on. Um, and so that becomes nice. Let's scale this down just a little bit. This becomes so let's do this with the depth being negative 100. so I don't know if you can tell exactly what I just did there with the volume but every time the drum hits it's doing like an inverse so you could do like a really intricate side chain effect with percussion and the synth so that when they're playing simultaneously um, they're intertwining in a different way. Um, I think that that's actually maybe even more interesting. So let's do stereo output. So I don't like that drum kit, but the idea I think is solid. I think that there's some interesting things you can do with the inverse um, that would be useful. Um, yeah, Gigadeth, I agree. Inverse effect, I think it could be super useful. Uh, we need to try this along with an electronic kit. I agree. 
Okay, we are actually um, running up against about 50 minutes. Um, and I try to stop talking at 15 minutes, see if there's any questions, and then stop the stream. Um, I've had enough uh, issues. This stream almost didn't happen just because having some problems with my streaming stuff, as I said at the very beginning of the video. Um, and every once in a while, you can see my green. Um, I need to... I took apart my whole setup this weekend and re-put it up. And I need to um, make it better. Uh, something's going on with it that I don't know what it is. So I'll figure that out. But excuse the green. I want these... I really want some of these videos to be more of a resource over time. And I hate it when they, when they look a little bit... Um, get kind of a low quality trashy um and so i i don't i don't like that part of it that every once in a while the green's coming through but um cool so wow now we have a bunch of people watching um sh go back and re-watch this video because it has a lot about the modulation engine uh, it has a ton of stuff that's really useful with this um it has good information about all of it because in the next video we are going to be doing uh, some more stuff. We are certainly going to be uh, pulling ourselves into the heart of the beast. Um, we're going to be going up into the various types of synthesis. Um, and so I think I can do this. Let me see. Um, so all the way up on this side. So this section right up here where it says spectral, pitch, formant, granular, and sampler, and then VA, which is uh, uh, really, it's like vintage analog, I think is what that stands for. It's really trying to just emulate some of those classic wave shapes. So this section up here is where we're going to go next. And we're going to talk all about uh, those various things as we do it. Um, I, I don't think we're going to be able to do all of them at once. We're certainly going to have to dive in and um, and go through each one individually. Uh, that part is to be seen still, but I want to actually dive in more into those and actually look at them. Uh, we still have to talk a little bit about the effects that are um, over on this side too. We didn't really get into this section of each of the sources. Um, and we haven't done anything with the morph pad yet, which is actually pretty straightforward, but I just like, I'm never surprised uh, when it's not. But um, it's like, I wanna show you how to attach this to an external controller and morph between the four different sources. Um, and you can see we have like, some options for doing that um, and as we pan between them we can create some pretty complicated things but again that's not one of the more complicated things when we get into spectral um, and granular and even formant uh, i mean those are relatively complicated things where we can do some things that um, are really mind-blowing in terms of sound generation so i think what we'll do in the next video is look at importing uh, like a sampled instrument and then we'll import that same one into each of the different types uh, and explore exactly what we can do with them because I mean that's really the beauty of this whole thing is is getting in and doing that so um, cool any other last questions before we get going is there a wavetable included with alchemy uh, bitumen that's like one of the only ones that there's not um, because we have, um, we have pretty much almost everything else is possible. Now, the one thing I will say is that when we're doing a few of these, I think granular might be one of them. Um, because granular and wavetable are similar, um, and I say they're similar in the, in the way that you break things into small chunks. A wavetable is a series of simple waveforms that are put into a file, and then we reference each of those. We play them in certain orders, forwards, backwards, or randomly. Um, granular is a little bit different. We can mimic it a little bit, and we have the forward and backward motion 
of, of wavetable. But if I'm doing wavetable and logic, I'm still going to uh, use one of the other instruments, which is um, the retro synth, because it actually has an actual wavetable uh, instrument that's designed for it. And so it has a bunch of tables that we can actually use and import our own. Um, but I still think we can mimic that to a certain degree uh, with, with alchemy. Now, alchemy, one of the reasons they, they brought in some of the tools, uh, for instance, that lets us use um, Melodyne, where you have to be able to hold the sound from the tracks in like a holding station before you play it back. Um, that technology was introduced into Logic for Alchemy because Alchemy requires it to work. Um, all of the sounds and stuff are not directly read or created. Many of them, if you load them in, they, you have to be able to play them forwards and backwards in any direction or randomly access any of those things. And so a lot of that technology was first introduced into Logic to make this instrument work right. Um, and so if you're not taking advantage of some of those things, then you're missing out on some of it. We'll definitely get into it. It's like I'm already jumping ahead a little bit. Um, and Gigadeth, you're right. You should be a little, no, I'm just kidding. You should be a little upset. But um, Logic can do almost anything. I, I love when people are like, but you can't do this. And I'm like, oh, well, there's only a few things I had to buy as third-party plugins. Um, and a few things that I wanted to buy. I do use some third-party things that I love, but um, not because I can't do it in Logic, but because it's like a personal preference. And then Bitumen, excited to see the next stream. Thanks for the answer. Now I know the Retro Synth has wavetables. This is awesome. I love Retro Synth on Logic for trying to design older sounds. That's exactly, it does like FM synthesis, a traditional subtractive and wavetable. It's a really cool instrument. It's overlooked in many ways. Okay, I think that's it for today. Thanks everybody for coming and um, we'll get our technical green screen stuff worked out so that it looks better next time. And I will see you next next time, either tomorrow or the next day. I haven't decided yet.